few hand claps. That's okay. That's, that's okay. You don't, have to, you don't have to clap for them to be great. They're going to be great. We have all sinned and fallen short of God's moral standards. Amen? Y'all believe that? Who has not ever fallen short of God's moral standards? Okay, good. It's unanimous. Romans 3 and 23 says, how many have sinned? All. all have sinned and all have what? All have sinned and all have come short. Look at your neighbor and say, you all right because all have sinned. Amen. And I told y'all, I've been saying it, but I stressed it a few years back. We're just not going to be a church that judges people for failure. Amen. We want failures to come to the church and learn how not to fall. Amen. See, the very passage in Jude that says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling suggests that a fall is imminent and a fall is possible. But now unto him that is able to what? So let's get the folks that fall around him that is able to keep us from falling. Amen. And present us faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy. You know that exceeding joy is when you've overcome something that you used to fall over. And now you don't fall anymore and you get that exceeding joy that yes, I passed that test. Doesn't that bring joy? Yeah. Amen. I thought I was preaching to some humans today. If I'm preaching to some cyborgs and some AI, let me know. Amen. And we will escort you out or hook you up to the sound system or something. But for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Although certain sins carry consequences that are more grave than others, in God's eyes, all sin is what? Worthy, Worthy of death. So yeah, in our eyes, certain sins are worse. Amen? Everybody got P. Diddy as the worst human on earth. But P. Diddy got a list of everybody you like and all the music you like and all the movies you like and they all doing the same thing right. amen you just everybody they don't even say pause no more they say no diddy got diddy out there diddy's taking the fall for the whole wicked industry because the industry is wicked everybody you like and watch and listen to out there is in the same stuff P. Diddy's into. Amen. This, I'm not defending P. Diddy. I'm just telling you. When the, when the media decides to target someone. They target them. Isolate them. As if others aren't participants. The main person. Putting Diddy out there. Was 50 Cent. The main one, he going in, he just, uh, just going in, 50 cent, candy store, the candy store. Women's booties are candy to him. Naked tail women dancing and shaking. And you got something to say about what P. Diddy's doing? And why, why, where's the LGBT? If it's homosexual stuff, P. Diddy doing, ain't that what they like? So what's wrong with it? I'll preach in here. What's wrong with it? But the worst part about this, look at somebody say, this is the worst part. The worst part is pastors, preachers, and folks that's supposed to be preaching the gospel are talking about this mess. You letting TMZ dictate what you're discussing. You're discussing stuff you know nothing about. You don't know the truth about any of this. All of it is speculation. All of it is media gossip. And you taking a text and preaching, calling out these names of rappers and preachers. I 
know I'm preaching. Man, see, that's why you got to stick with the gospel. The gospel don't change. Amen. Amen. TMZ ain't reporting on the gospel. Look at somebody and say, whose report you going to believe? You believe in social media enough to preach it? Address it? Folk ask me every time, when you going to address what's going on with P. Diddy? And when you going to address T.D. Jakes? And when you going to address? Never. Just because the world is talking about it don't mean the church is supposed to be talking about it. Just because the world is on it don't mean the preacher is supposed to be on it. That don't have nothing to do with me. I don't know what the facts are. That's right. That's right. They had no case yet. And even when they have a case, why ain't you, why ain't you somewhere praying? That's right. Praying for all the people that's going to be scarred and damaged by this. That's right. That's right. And why are you so happy to see somebody get taken down? What birthed that in your heart? Who took you down? That's the only time you got that feeling. When something is on your heart. Look at somebody say, you better have some mercy. Ooh, because the thing about mercy, it just flies around. Ooh. And if you deny it, it'll just go on away. And when it's gone away and you need it, it's gone. Although certain sins carry consequences that are more grave than others, in God's eyes, all sin is worthy of death. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of what kind of sin? Sin, sin is death. That's all sin. That's an all-inclusive word. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. How many of you want the gift of God? I don't want the wages of sin. I want the gift, gift of God. You know that gift? You know what a, a real gift you wasn't expecting. And a real, real gift you didn't even deserve. I want that gift. Senseless sins, foolish errors, presumptuous sins, and youthful lust should all be avoided and defeated in order to live a life pleasing unto God. Avoid it and defeat it. Amen? Senseless sins, all of this stuff. Look at somebody and say, we got to grow up. Youthful, youthful lust, all of this stuff needs to be avoided and defeated. Amen? In order to live a life pleasing unto God. Amen? Stuff you did growing up, you need to quit doing. Amen. Don't you turn 30 and still cussing as a Christian. You're too old for that. You should be past that now. You should have defeated that. Amen. You shouldn't still be smoking weed and you're a Christian. You should have defeated that. That's a senseless sin. Weed is a senseless sin. Because weed is just preventing you from dealing with yourself. That's right. Amen. How you save and you're not letting God deal with you? Amen. Amen. Youthful lust. You ought to be better than that by now. That's right. Amen. That's right. Woman walk by, you shouldn't be turning around and looking, men. Uh -huh. You should be past that. Right. See? I'm pre I'm, it's too real. I'm, I'm just, that's the truth. Amen. Amen. Women, your cleavage should be covered by now. By now. When you was in the club, that was the way you looked in the club. You are in the house of God now. Your dress is too tight. Your dress should be loose now. Looser. Is that a word? Your dress should be looser. Your attire, looser. Amen. These are things that you need to avoid and defeat because they keep getting you in trouble. Amen. Overcoming these struggles is a part of our faith walk. 
This is beautiful, y'all. Faith walk. See, when you're saved, you're a believer, you're on a faith walk. Amen? That means you're thanking God for all that he has helped you get past, and you believe in God for all you struggle with. That's a faith walk. That's a faith walk. That's a faith walk. It's not a whole, perfect, complete walk. Even Paul said, I'm not saying I'm perfect and complete. He said, but I'm pressing toward a mark. Pressing forward. By faith. See, if a mark is in front of you and you believe in you're going to get there, that's faith. That's faith. Amen. Amen. See, this is, I'm breaking it down too simple. Some folks say, well, all you got to do is get filled with the Holy Ghost and you'll never fall or you'll never sin again. That's not true. That's, that's not true. No, no. First of all, you got to keep getting filled with the Holy Ghost. So that's not a one time thing. And second, <laughs> And second of all, you still going to be tempted. And if you don't deal with your issues that are in your heart, they're going to come out with you full of the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody. They don't want to. I just messed up somebody's. Man, this is a real faith walk. Faith walk is you got to battle by faith. That means you got to believe. I'm not done yet, but I will be. Amen. Then you got to look at the things that you have defeated and say, because of these things, I have faith to defeat these things. Amen. I hope I can preach to somebody in here a real message about mercy. Some folks think that they're there and ABC ain't the church for you. That means you better than everybody. We don't have better than in here. Ain't no better than less than in the house of God. There's only one better than. There's only one that is righteous. But this isn't an excuse for you to go and do the fool and act any kind of way. That's not what I'm saying. I just told you these things ought to be avoided and defeated. But overcoming these struggles is a part of our faith walk. Anybody have to overcome struggles in their faith walk? It's a faith walk. We must always believe that we can win sin battles. That's faith. Always, but look at somebody say, always believe that you can win sin battles. Amen. And we need to quit looking at all sins as murder and crime related. No, your attitude can be sinful. Your closed heart lack of compassion can be sinful. Lack of mercy. Your racism can be sinful. Your anger towards somebody. Your malice. Your jealousy and your envy. Boy, somebody ain't getting with this message. What is happening? I was telling the band this morning, you know, the older I get, the, the more God is stretching my understanding of humans. And the reason he's stretching it is not because he's just talking to me, telling me stuff. He's showing me in the word how he dealt with people and how he really feels about his creation. See, when you've been through pain and trauma, molestation, rape, and all of these kind of things, a hatred or a malice, a malicious disposition can get in your heart and you will start judging people too harshly. When people, somebody has done you wrong, you will judge people too harshly harshly and you will judge them based on how you feel and not how God feels amen because you see when somebody do, does you wrong when somebody does you wrong while you're hating them God may be working on them while you're wishing them dead God may be calling them to ministry You're not God. And I'm learning that. Man, I got to be careful what I say. Overcoming these struggles is a part of our faith walk. We must always believe we can win sin battles. Romans 6 and 8, 17 says, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart 
that form of doctrine which was what? Oh, the key, delivered to you. The key to this is the heart. I said that on Instagram this morning. Whatever's in your heart, that's your life. So the devil will come and purposely traumatize your heart so your life will be traumatizing. He'll cause somebody to hurt you so you'll hate people. He'll cause somebody to come do you wrong so you'll think everyone does people wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's for. That's why he did it. He'll mess you up. Yeah. That's why a homosexual is a homosexual. Because a man somehow failed him. Failed him so bad that he don't desire to be a man. That's why a woman is a stud. Because a man has failed her to the point to where she feels she can do it better. That's why people get in these lifestyles. Trauma. The devil sold a traumatic event in them and they are living out what's in their heart because of what happened to them. Yeah, it's your heart. Out of the heart flows the issues of your life. All your issues stem from your heart. Yeah, so when David sinned with Bathsheba and all that, he didn't blame Bathsheba. Lord, she shouldn't have been so fine. He didn't say none of that foolishness. No, he didn't blame that. He didn't blame himself and say, God, I'm just crazy. No, he said, create in me a what? A what? That means something is wrong with my heart. There was something in my heart that came out the wrong way at the wrong time and led me into sin. So I got to address what's in my heart. Something in your heart making you talk about people all the time. Making you gossip. Making you love gossip. Making you just slob come out of your mouth at the, ne at the next gossip site you see. You can't wait to find out what's going on so you can mm -hmm. There's something in your heart. Somebody did that to you. Or you feel like a failure and you want other people to fail. So you'll have company. That's in your heart. You got to obey the doctrine from the heart. Can I keep going? Yeah, that's some of you. <laughs> Holiness and righteousness are ways of living that we strive for. However, when we overcome struggles and win sin battles, we cannot place ourselves above those that are still battling and failing in certain areas. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, I'm no better than you. Amen. Look at her. Look at your wife. Look at her and say that. I'm no better than you. And she already know. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. She already knows. She just waiting on you to say it. Your wife know you better than you think she know you. She already know. Amen. You don't look like you. You look like this to her. <laughs> when you act like this amen you act like a king she'll look at you like a king amen amen well two claps let me move on <laughs> however when we overcome struggles and wins in battles we cannot place ourselves above those that are battling or failing especially in the marriage Especially, man, you better be forgiven to your spouse. Amen. Because mercy is going to fly away. And when you need it, because it always, oh, see, I'm 50, what am I, 54? I've learned, J. Brian, at this age, it always comes back. 
every time. Every time. Every. It comes back. It comes back. I just watch it and I hear it and I see people say stuff and I'll be like, oh, they shouldn't have said that. Because that's going to come back. Mm. Mm. They shouldn't have looked at their neighbor, looked down on them. God going to put them down. Ooh, they shouldn't have talked about their kids. You shouldn't have talked about those people's kids. Because you have kids. You shouldn't have put down their children. And made yours better. Oh. These are things I sit back and watch like, ooh. Yeah. Shouldn't have tore that person down, man. Yeah. You know, as a pastor, from the pastor seat, you see it all. Man. Amen. So we can't place ourselves above those that are still battling and failing in certain areas. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each do what? Always esteem others better than yourselves. Amen. Don't believe the okie doke. I was going to say something, but it's not appropriate. Don't believe something don't stink. You know, your fecal matter stinketh just like everybody else's. Don't you think you better? Don't think you're better. If you think you better, God going to show you that you're not. And when he show you that you're not, everybody's going to see it. <laughs> People that view themselves as better than others are deceived. Just because we do not struggle with the same sin as others does not give us the right to condemn them or anyone for that matter. Amen. 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 No, no, no. Romans 2 and 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that sits as a judge of other men's matters. For wherein thou judgest another you're only condemning yourself because God don't bless mess. That's a good one. He don't bless judges, not these kind. Thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges doeth the same things. And this does not mean the same thing that you're judging. This means you do the same thing as in sin. Because in God's eyes, all sin is sin. So you're doing the same thing, so shut up. Amen. Amen. And this is not including a pastor trying to correct somebody in a church or elders or something, you know. Correction is in the body of Christ. It's just, it needs to be done properly. Amen. Amen. Excluding the internet. You don't address somebody personally online because that's not addressing them personally. Can I keep preaching? We are not God. Look at somebody and say, you're not God. So we don't know the hearts or thoughts of others. When we position ourselves as judges of heart, motive, or intent of others, then we do what? We sabotage our blessings of God. So we just don't know people's hearts. Amen? So quit saying that. Look at somebody and say, quit saying that. I know, I know what he was thinking. No, you don't. I know what she meant. No, you didn't. No, you don't. You don't. I know it. Now, I know he went to hell. How do you know? Because he was in sin. How do you know? Because of what he did. How, how do you know what he did? The internet. Mm. 
See, I'm going to get real old school. Was you there the last minutes before he died? Last minute prayers don't work. Thief on the cross. That was his last. Matter of fact, he was dying on the cross. And got saved. Without baptism. Jesus will save somebody any way he want to and we are not the judges of it. Look at somebody say we know nothing. Who do you think you are? You don't know. So quit doing that man. And why you want to see folk die and go to hell anyway? I hope they got it right. In the last second don't go to hell. You know how you don't you don't understand how God feels about his creation then. You really don't. Because God if God was trying to put people in hell, he wouldn't have sacrificed his only begotten son. What is your son worth? He's trying to keep people out of there. So why are you putting them in there? When we position ourselves as judges of these things, we sabotage our blessings. Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Who searches the heart? He said, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try to reign, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. When Job lost everything and his friends came and they started questioning God, God sat Job down and said, Job, where were you? Where were you when I made this whole world? We are not God. Jesus died for our sins because of the mercy of what? God. (laughs) He died for our sins because of the mercy. This is how much mercy God had. Look, that's somebody right there. They just like, no, no, nope. For what you did to me, you can't win. For what you did to me, you can't. No, I can't let you live for what you did to me. How important are you? Are you worth a death? Should somebody die for what they did to you? And yet you should live for what you did to others. We're going to stop this, man. We ain't going to be wishing folks dead in the church. Pastor, I saw a vision that every, that folks just start dropping dead in the church. Well, you should have woke up and started praying for people. Uh Uh-oh, that's it. God's going to just start dropping. Folks just going to start. No, he's not. Why do, and why you want to see that? Why are you excited about that? Why is failure in your heart to see? You want to see it. Jesus died for our sins because of the mercy of God. God loves his creation and had mercy on our sinful state. He doesn't want us to die in our sins and we should not want to see our brothers and sisters punished because of their sins. Amen. Well, that's what he get. That's what you deserve. No better for you. What? You want to see people punished? I'm ready for God to start making an example out of people. I'm not. I'm not. You you ready? You ready for that? I'm not ready for that episode. And why would he do that? And he's already done it in the Bible. He made an example of enough of them. That's a whole Old Testament. If you just enjoy that. (laughs) No, no, no. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he did what? 
Okay, man, we can quote this, but don't nobody ever pay attention to what they're saying. This is how much he loved the world that he gave his only, only had one begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he loves his creation. So he don't need you wishing them dead and trying to destroy them because of what they did to you. Amen. Amen. Don't you destroy your wife because of what she did to you. Don't you destroy your husband or your children. Don't do that. Amen. See, that's okay. Amen. I know, I know, I know we all Hamidians. And that curse of ham is just genetic. And we like to we just like to see folks in trouble. That's what we like. Look, somebody don't want to agree. I, 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 let me say, I, when I was hooked on the hood fights, I was enjoying ratchetness to the highest level. I want to see teeth, hair, everything in the street. And I had to check myself. Why am I enjoying watching these folks fight in the street? It was something in my heart, man. I was mad at somebody. I was angry at somebody and I was enjoying just picturing them and their hair and their teeth and a Rottweiler just biting their ankle. That's what it was. And God had to show me that. He had to show me that. Jane. I didn't know. I'm thinking I'm just, I'm just, man, the hood fight, boy, the hood fight channel is the bob. No, something was in my heart. Something was wrong with me. And that was recent. And I'm saved. Hey, man, I, I know you can't admit when you, when you were struggling with something. That's okay. You better than me. You can be that. But I had a problem. I was watching that, but it was something in me that wanted me to see that. And I was enjoying watching that, just imagining if I was that Rottweiler. <laughs> and I know exactly whose ankle I'm latching on to. And I didn't know. I, it was subconscious. I wasn't picturing nobody or nothing like that. It was just malice in my heart yes. that I couldn't see. Didn't know it was there until God pointed it out and said, you got to get rid of this. This has to go. Amen. And you know, God talks to me like he don't talk to nobody else. You want your bills paid? Then you better get rid of that. Because I'm not blessing that. Yeah, God, he tells me all the time, I'm not blessing you if I can't trust you. Now, that don't mean I'm perfect and none of that. I'm not saying that. But there are certain things as a leader that I have to be able to do. Because right. he needs me for that. That's a part of what I do. That's right. So I can't, I can't ruin that. I got to stay on my call, man. I got to have compassion and mercy for people. Or I'm no good to God. That's right. So I can't be watching ratchet fights. Hey, Amen. I, I can't. One of them popped up the other day on the phone. And I quickly swiped. Amen. Amen. Can I just be transparent? I'll be real honest. I quickly swiped, got out of it, but then I picked my phone up later and I really wanted to find it. I did. I wanted to find it. I was like, you know, because sometimes if you swipe, you don't know, you can't get it back. And I was hoping, man, I hope it pops up again. <laughs> and then I had to pray and say, Lord, I don't, I don't want to even go back to that. It didn't pop up. I didn't go back to it. Can I just be, see, that's all right. That's all right. I'm too honest. That's okay. Y'all can't handle. But hey, that's, hey, and I'm, I'm good. I'm delivered. I'm everything. But if I watched two of them, I'd have been right back. It'd have been right back in my heart. Rod Waller, hair, teeth, the whole scenario. I'd have been back to square one. With seven more Rottweilers. Seven more teeth. Seven more wigs. It would have just been seven times worse.
when we are at the point of enjoying and almost looking forward to the punishment of others we are void of mercy I don't even know how anybody at this place stands up before God and talks to him how do you talk to him knowing that you enjoy people flaming out going down yeah looking forward to the punishment of others yeah yeah but man when we get to this point where we looking forward to the punishment we're void of mercy then we are no longer lovers of God's people but we have become stoic and unfe unfeeling toward them Proverbs 24 and 17 rejoice not when thine enemy falleth and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth and that's your enemy now let's read that again rejoice not when your enemy so don't rejoice with your enemy so if it's your brother and sister you're not even supposed to rejoice when your enemy falls and you happy that something happened to somebody that's in the faith because of what they did to you How important is life to you? I don't know anybody. How are you called of God to save lives and lives aren't important? That's the only currency in the kingdom. When everything is destroyed and restarted, the only currency will be life. Jesus is coming back for one thing. Life. Lives. Not money, not gold, not fame. Not views, not likes. Life. So if that's the currency of God's kingdom and you aren't sympathetic and loving towards life, then are you in the kingdom? Amen. Amen. Y'all don't have to clap. I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Amen. I'll be ready when the next video pop up. <laughs> the next hood fight. Amen. There is only one way to get mercy in this life. There's only one way. We must be merciful. <laughs> Man, if you can't think of yourself when you riding down on somebody, you better be Cuba Gooden Jr. Let me out. Doe, let me out. Doe had to let him out because he was thinking about his own life when he was riding down on somebody else's. I'm not built like the rest of y'all. None of y'all care about your lives. Man, I hate to preach with a John Singleton movie. Let me change, because that's somebody might think I recommended it. Pastor recommended it. We're going to have family movie night. Pastor. No, no, no. Hey. Amen. Don't even watch the TV version. If that's ratchet, you might as well watch the hood fights. You might as well. But, <laughs> yeah, but you got you to gotta have mercy. And you got to love the life that God has given others. And respect it for yours to be respected and loved. Amen. The Bible said if you want friends, you better show yourself friendly. You ain't merciful. Nobody's going to have mercy on you. Including God. This means that we are not looking forward to the demise of others or hoping for their fall. We should be praying and hoping that they get as much what? Mercy as necessary to overcome whatever struggle they are in. Have you prayed mercy on somebody? God give them mercy. 
If I give them mercy, they just gonna keep doing what they doing. What? How do you know that? Now you're judging hearts. Matthew 5 and 7. Blessed are the merciful because only the merciful are going to obtain what? Mercy. Very interesting story right here. I could go on and on. One day I will start at Jonah 1 because they're just... This is one of the best stories in the Bible. So much, so much, so much. Jonah was a prophet of God, uh, but he was sometimey and weird. Uh, <laughs> he, he had a history even back in Jeroboam days when he's mentioning Kings, Second Kings. Um, he, he, he spoke something and it was like, eh, I don't know. You know, we just kind of. Mm, but he was called of God. He was just sometimey. And you know, some of y'all are called of God and you're sometimey. Hey Amen. We all sometimey sometimes. That's what sometimes means. Sometimey. Hey Amen. <laughs> yeah, we've all had our own struggles and all of that. Hey Amen. You've been sometimey before. Right? So we can relate to Jonah. The, the book of Jonah is in there just for this. So we can relate to this. This is a story about us. So just take Jonah's name out and put your name there. <laughs> God tells Jonah, hey Jonah, go speak against Nineveh. Nineveh is the enemy of Israel, part of Assyria. Nineveh is the great, great giant. I mean, it's a big city. Three days walk through the whole city. That's a huge city for back then. And he tells him, he said, hey, go cry against them because their sins and this is very important their sins has come before me that's a whole nother story that's an era man five story i don't have time to talk with how sins come before god and his patience his kindness how you know how they move up and finally god has said okay it's here now now it's got to change because it's going to affect something else all right so sins come up before god god says hey jonah go tell him I'm, you know, uh, they're going to be destroyed uh, if they change. Jonah says, nope. <laughs> the Bible said he went in the other direction to Tarsus, got on a ship to Joppa, going in the other direction, away from Nineveh. He just like, nope. Yeah, that's us. He's like, nope, nope. Yep. Prophet of God, call to God. God speaking to him, telling him, hey, go do this. Do this. Nope. And just, just bounces the other way. So he gets on the ship with these pagan dudes, and these dudes are pagans. They worship all kind of gods or whatever. He jumps on the ship with worldly folks. So at this point, Jonah don't care whether he lives or dies. He just really don't care. I just don't want to go to Nineveh because Nineveh is the enemy of Israel. I want them dead. They have hurt Israel. They have been the problem for Israel. I need them dead. So I'm not going to speak a good word to them. Because all they're going to do is repent and you're going to let them live. And I want them dead. So I'm out. Peace. Get on the ship. Goes to the bottom of the ship. Goes to sleep. Right? God speaks to the water. Water just start rocking the boat. Rocking the boat. Dudes go wake Jonah up and say, hey man, something's wrong. I say, you need to talk to your God. And tell your God to stop this, you know, because our gods don't do this kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, our gods ain't like this. So this has to be you. Who are you? I'm Jonah. Well, what God you serve? And Jonah, crazy. Y'all, I told y'all, he's y'all. He's us. He says, hey, I serve the God that's over the sea. So you serve the God that's over the land and the sea that made the land and the sea and you go get in the sea against the God? <laughs> so that don't make no, what's wrong with you? So they're like, well, okay, since your God is the one mad, tell us what to do. Um, throw, me, throw me overboard. Just, just, just throw me out. Okay, so now we have to murder somebody. Your God already bad. Now we're going to murder his person? So the, they, they thought about it for a little while and then the boat, the boat got a little rocky so they was like, you know what? I think we need to go throw him over. <laughs> so they threw Jonah over but the Bible said they all got saved. 
Now this is how crazy Jonah is. Jonah is in, in a whale. They on the boat praising God. They done got saved and accepted the God. The, 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 the. <laughs> That's Jonah. Jonah in the belly of a fish. Jonah in the belly of a fish. Then he start praying, start talking to God in the fish. God let the fish spit him up because God loves him. This is my man. This is who I call. God don't give up on us like that. Now, we give up on people like that. Oh, he ain't called. He was never called. God ain't never called him. If we had saw Jonah and Jonah's actions right then, we'd have started a ministry to condemn Jonah and got likes and views on the internet. Jonah would have been a topic for a whole week of our discussions. Look at God's fallen prophet. And God was with Jonah the whole time. It's like, this is my man. I, I called him. I'm rocking with him. God could have let him fall asleep on that ship, ship be destroyed. God raised somebody else up. He loves us too much. I called this man. This man's scared of me because I'm God. This man has experienced something in the natural that God is accounting for. This has been Israel's enemy. For years. That's in the natural. God is accounting for that. Oh, this is why he feels like that. See, that's what we don't do. This is why he feels that way. He feels that way because they've been battling and he just, okay, he just, but I called him. And here's the thing. God ain't guessing. God knew this when he called Jonah. He knew the fish and everything. So who are we with our crazy perspective? To take some internet clips and believe we can judge the heart of a person and a person's intense with no mercy. Boy, I'm preaching today. So I'm setting this story up. We round Jonah 2 right now. So they end up, <laughs> he's, in the, he's in the fish, fish spits him up on land. He gets out, probably just, you know, cleaned himself up. And then God said, okay. <laughs> Go to Nineveh. <laughs> Do what I said the first time. <laughs> so the Bible said it's a three-day journey to get in the end of the city. But he didn't walk three days. They say on the first day he took two steps. All right, y'all. <laughs> Forty days, you're going to be overthrown. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> it was pretty jive the way he did it. <laughs> but that's what he said. Yet 40 days, none of us shall be overthrown. But that's all it took. That's all God needed. Because the Bible says in five, so the people of Nineveh, the Ninevites, believed God and proclaimed a fast, put on sackcloth, sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, the king. So God spoke through his prophet. His prophet speaks to everyone. The king hears it. The king is the most wicked one because he's leading the wickedness. But his heart turns. King heard about it. Oh, what, what? We, we, we about to end now. I heard about this God. Y'all, we got to change some stuff. So the word of the Lord came. The word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne. He laid his robe, took his robe off and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Sackcloth was a poor man's robe. You put that on when you were being humbled. It was made out of goat's hair. So you know what that felt like. It was rough. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock taste anything. I need the animals and everybody saved. Nobody eat anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered in sackcloth. Let's make sure the cattle is okay. And cry mightily unto God yet. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. And then who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away his fierce anger that we perish not? So we're going to try this. Maybe God will hear us and change his mind. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And what did God do? God repented of the evil. That he had said that he would do unto them. 
and he did it not. <sighs> but here comes Jonah. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. You're very angry? Very. You're really that mad that people didn't die. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, Lord, was not this my saying? First of all, who are you talking to, Jonah? Jonah done lost, he got some fish guts in his head. Fish guts in his ears, because why are you talking? Was this not, didn't I tell you, God, when I was in my own country? That's why I went to Tarshish. For I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repentant thee of evil. He's quoting Exodus. So you quote a scripture. Jonah is out of control. <laughs> Therefore now, Lord, just, just, just kill me. Take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Now he's quoting Elijah. So he just going through the Bible, throwing the word back at God. This man is mad. I mean, I, and the Lord said, Dost thou well to be angry with me? Is it right to be angry? Like, do you have a right to be angry? Jonah didn't even answer. Rolled his eyes at God. So Jonah just, <clears throat> just went out of the city. Then sat on the east side of the city. Now this is the jivest thing that he does. He made a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. So he's sitting to see, I, they ain't going to repent. They ain't going to repent and God about to destroy it. So I'm going to sit here so I can see. And in the hour while he's mad, the Bible said the Lord prepared a vine or a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his bald crazy head to deliver him from his grief and Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd God done sheltered you mercy just cooling you off glad about the gourd but then God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day <laughs> And it smoked the gourd. It ate the plant up, the roots, and then it started to wither. And it came to pass when the sun did arise, God made an east wind blow, and the sun beat up on the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished himself to die. And he said, it is better for me to die than to live. God said to Jonah, dost thou well be, do you have a right to be angry about the plant? God is teaching him something. He said, you got a right to be angry about that plant? He said, I do. I do have a right to be angry about the plant, even unto death. And then the Lord said, okay, you fell in love with this little plant and you didn't labor for it. You didn't make it grow. <laughs> it came up in the night and perished in the night. So should not I spare Nineveh, that great city wherein there are 120,000 people that cannot discern between their right hand and their left? Summary! The moral of that story is have mercy. God had all this mercy on him and he didn't even recognize any of it because he was so vehemently in agreement with the destruction of this city. He wanted people dead. God does not want us to forget what Jesus has done for us. He has not forgotten the pain and shame placed on his son for our sins. So he doesn't want us believing that we are good enough without Jesus' sacrifice. Jonah, being chosen by God to cry out against sin, believed that he himself was above those whose sins were great. He didn't see what he was doing as, as worse than what they did. But the Bible says too much is given, much is required. 
So the very fact that you ran from God and disobeyed God is worse than what the people of Nineveh was doing because they weren't chosen by God. He didn't see that. He was so angry. And if it's in our heart to be that angry at someone, we can't see the truth about ourselves. We can't see the truth about what we're doing. We're too angry, too mad, too upset. And we don't realize that there's no mercy. Jonah did not realize that he was in sin by denying God's people an opportunity to repent. Then when they repented, he was disappointed that God was so merciful, totally forgetting how God rescued him from the belly of the fish. God wanted him to learn that, mercy, that the mercy he received is the same mercy he must give. Amen? Amen? To God, nothing matters on earth more than his people. Even when they are trifling, in a fallen state, or backslidden, God desires for them to repent and turn back to him. God is merciful towards his people, and we must what? Be the same way. We cannot become cynics, glorying in the fall of others, or looking for God's wrath to consume people in their sin. We should be declaring God's word and praying for repented hearts that will turn back to God. In our own lives, we don't need to question why we should show mercy. Just think about the depth of mercy God shows you. This will help us show mercy to others, even when we think they do not deserve it or we do not understand why we should give it to them. The very mercy we give will be the same mercy we receive. If we truly desire to see God, we must be what? Merciful. James 2 and 13 says, for judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Let that sink in for a second. It's a scary scripture. Judgment is without mercy to one who's shown no mercy because mercy triumphs over what? Judgment. Everyone stand to your feet. More mercy, Lord. More mercy. Just come up. If that's you, you need more mercy. I don't know what happened to you. Could have been way, way back in childhood. And it's something you still think about. Something still haunts you and troubles you. Angers you. Well, that anger, that issue, whatever happened to you, is going to dictate how you operate and treat people. Yeah, you don't want to become a Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of God, but I don't want to be like him. Nah, man, Jonah was short-sighted. He could only see what he wanted to see because of his anger. Anger does that. It'll blind you. It'll blind you to the truth of a message like this. You'll hear this message for someone else and never internalize it because you're so angry. You're so traumatized that you can't hear what I'm saying. All you can see is the picture of somebody else's face. Y'all, we got to get past this as a people. African Americans and white and Hispanic and all of us have been affected by years and years of trauma passed down. Some of us, our parents taught us to hate people. Our, our mother taught us how to hate certain ones in the family, how to treat them different and how to, because they think they this and they think they that and that started in you. Some of our fathers were racist and taught you the white man is this and the black man is this and how oh, this and that stuff got embedded in your development. Those issues, those things, that, that's in your heart. And so it's going to dictate how you treat people. So you come to a fellowship like this and you can't connect with nobody because you're too angry. And whenever you're angry like that, you're going to eventually get mad at me. But we got to make sure that we have mercy for these situations. Mercy for people. Mercy for those that hurt us. Mercy for those that let us down. 
mercy for those that did whatever happened mercy because we're gonna need that same mercy amen so everyone bow your heads father god we just thank you lord we thank you for mercy your mercy goodness and mercy thank you father god for a message about mercy so help us to have mercy so there will be mercy for us help us to forgive that person help us to forgive that situation help us father god take the trauma of it out of us take it out of our hearts god and create in us a clean heart don't let what happened to us change us don't let it change our purpose don't let it change our our, your plan for us if we're ministers don't let it change our ministry don't let it alter us to the point to where we're not who we started out to be and who you desire for us to be we want to be chosen by you and we want you to trust us so God help us have mercy help us have the same mercy that you have for us in the name of Jesus we pray y'all sing this song come on hallelujah I'm amazed at how you show me mercy just keep praying for mercy come oh on. God my God thank you for your mercy. mercy for my husband mercy for my wife Lord, for my amazed. children Mercy. How you show me mercy. Hallelujah. Oh God, my God, thank you for your mercy. Come on, everybody, say, Lord, I'm amazed at how you show me mercy. Come on, oh God, my God. Oh God, my God, thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, I'm amazed. Time, lift it up. Lord, I'm amazed. Hallelujah. Come on, sing that to him. You show me. Come on, lift your hands and sing this song. Lord, I'm amazed. How you show me mercy. Oh, God, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, one more time. Lift it up. Lord, I'm amazed. How you show me Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for your mercy that you've shown us. We thank you for the mercy that you've taught us to have. So help us from now on, God, to have mercy. Help us, Father God, to think of ourselves and what we need from you before we rain judgment on others. Help us, God, in our walk, our talk, our behavior let it be reflective of the very mercy that you've had on us the very mercy that will cause you to allow your son to die for our sins thank you lord for your mercy in jesus name we pray amen amen come on hug somebody and say have mercy have mercy. Thank you for your mercy. 
Come on, sing. On your way to your seat. Oh, 